Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the review of Western Europe, the last one this time around and yeah, you saw the headline. Just when you thought that this might happen, everything else was ha ha happening and in a way, especially look at Spain, not much happened or in Portugal, but just when you thought something else was happening. The bigger picture, just when you thought that Atletico Madrid got a huge win and really got back on track onto winning ways with their win over Bilbao, they drop points at Getafe. And Barcelona is right there in the title race. Just when you thought that Real Madrid will lose against um, lowly um, Elche, they pull out the win late. Just when you thought that PSG might actually pull themselves back into first place because the other two up there were not winning, PSG actually manages to lose. And I have another one. Just when you thought that Sporting might actually draw points for the first time uh, for the first time in a long time uh, ex uh, against lower opposition, I mean they drew against Porto, um, ju just when you thought that, they pull out another win. And so, as I said, not much has changed, but everything has changed. And the big winner, I think, of the weekend, I crowned Barcelona, although I was really close to saying Atletico Madrid is back and that gets us now into the games. I mean, this Wednesday evening game, to me, was a bigger game than what ever happened in the Champions League, almost. Uh, um, Atletico Madrid against Bilbao. It was a really, really interesting game. And for the most part of the first half, it was Atletico Bilbao who were the better team. Uh, and they get a goal with a wonderful strike by Munyain, uh, who doesn't hit the ball fully, but because of that weird touch, the ball goes in, in internet and it's 1-0 Bilbao. And Nerves were going high for Atletico Madrid. However, Marcos Llorente just before halftime, and this was another really nicely played goal through Thomas Lemar, gets the equalizer. And right after the half, a penalty, and Luis Suarez steps up, and it is 2 1 for Atletico Madrid. And then they played it home rather easily. So I still think Atletico Madrid would have deserved a point. Out of this one, however, uh, Atletico Madrid go six points clear and you really thought at this point, yeah, this might be exactly the type of win that Atletico Madrid needed to kind of assert themselves on a title race. Um, for Bilbao, you know, nothing really changed in that table, but you know, this six points going clear and now 60% chance of winning, do you really thought that at this point Atletico Madrid will go through? And then the weekend came. And before we talk about the other game, we had a first uh, Valencia derby where Levante beats Valencia and is on course to finish for the first time in the history ahead of the big city rivals. Uh, then we had Real Madrid Elche. I turned over to that game. I think it was after I, I, I watched Bundesliga. And in the moment I turned over, Calvo makes the 1 0 for Elche. Up until that point, yes, at Le uh, Real Madrid, of course, was the better team. I mean, you wouldn't expect any, anything else, but it being anything but convincing. And uh, that 1 0 was just a uh, confirmation that something's not quite right. Again, Sidan messing around a whole lot of much uh, here and there, uh, playing actually Sergio Ramos for a little bit. But Right after the goal, Sergio Ramos come, comes off and Rodrigo come, comes on, Modric comes on, Kroos comes on. So everything where he was trying a few things, it didn't work. Now let's get the big boys on. And the big boys really turned, turned, turned around. Uh, by the way, um, Eden Azar is injured again. That is just one of those tra transfers that never materializes because of in in injury. In any case, Modric assists Bonsema. And it is 1-1 one, one and 7, 73rd, but still Elche hang, hang on the Real Madrid, not too convincing. However, with all these players out there, you will get the win. Uh, Aiden Azar actually came on for just those 50, 50 minutes, but then he injured himself again. But uh, Rodrigo in the stoppage time assists Bonsema, who takes a wonderful shot via the inside of the post and in. I mean, that was the highlight of, 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 of the game, a really nicely taken goal. Real Madrid, just when you thought that they are out of the title race, they might just well stay in there for a little bit longer. Although they have at least a game against Barcelona in hand. Sooner we are the lead, nil nil. Let's not talk about it. Getafe, Atletico Madrid. Again, uh, what I I actually saw quite some of that game, and what I have to say is, I always had the feeling Atletico Madrid is hanging way too much back. 
way too much. I mean, they got a little bit uh, sucked into the game uh, by Aketafe, who completely got them off the game. And you know, you didn't have Joao Felice, you, had, uh, you didn't have uh, Dembele, uh, who also can, 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 come, can come later. But uh, it was not a good showing by Atletico Madrid. Aketafe was well in the game, and it was a, a level-headed match until Niom. <laughs> Great name, I think Sid Lowe from TSFP said so. Uh, get sent off. And that changed the game. And suddenly, the commander turned on a little bit like Spurs against our Arsenal, but it did not happen. Uh, Luis Suarez with a great shot. I think he fully meant it, hit the post. Uh, they had a few chances, and I think Dembele, like his namesake from uh, Bar 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 Barcelona, he probably should have pulled at least one of his chances away, but in the end, it ends only nil nil. Definitely points dropped. For Atletico Madrid. Celta Vigo against Bilbao, another nil-nil. And I knew that Bilbao will not play great, you know, having so many midweek games which they are they are they're used to. I actually was hope oh, Celta Vigo in, uh, entertains me. No, I quickly went to PSV against Fe Feyenoord. That was not a good game to watch, and it was clear. After just watching for me, this will end up nil-nil. Nil-nil uh, almost was happening between Granada and Real Sociedad if it wasn't for a crazily deflected shot by uh, Sanchez that gives Granada the 1-0 win. And Real Sociedad continues to be, I mean, not necessarily they were showing in this game, but continues to be one of the teams that can play the nicest soccer out there in, uh, with anywhere in Spain. I have no punch, no end pro product, which is rather, rather disappointing. The big derby ends with a 1-0 Sevilla win, although it could have ended in 1-1 one -one with uh, a crazy scene uh, at, the very, uh, at the very end. Uh, Iglesias is running on, on the goal, ball taken away. It is cleared uh, and then bounces off Iglesias who is lying on, on, on the floor and Diago Car Carlos scratches it off the line. Actually this was a big win for Sevilla because they did not have good showings as of late. And then yesterday in the evening, in the 767th game for Leo Messi, I think he has now rivaled the record of Xavi, Barcelona takes on Huesca and with a win there within four points. And no one in their right mind would have thought that this um, is not gonna happen. And when Leo Messi in the third minute takes a wonderful shot, uh, it goes fr so well placed. Crossbar, goal line, crossbar, in. I had, at one moment I thought that the goalkeeper held there. No, it was all me messy. Wonderful, wonderful shot taken. And Barcelona from that moment on was cruising. Griezmann, no one bothers to uh, take him on. Makes a similarly great shot. Maybe not as well placed. We can argue which goal was better. I still think it's Messi's goal. Although Griezmann was from a little bit further, further out. But then... They get, Wesker gets out of nowhere a penalty. Something that, if you look at it, I still don't know where the penalty foul is. Uh, Radomir steps up and converts the penalty, and suddenly a game that was so Barcelona cruising becomes a little bit tighter. However, you know, a little bit into the uh, second half, corner Messi, Mingetha, no one bothers to mark him in, in, in the box. It is. 3-1, uh, three, three but then uh, Wesker had a few chances actually, and one, um, was it rather, rather the, the, the cross comes in, he is clear in front of an empty goal, the head is in the right place, and he hits it with his shoulder over the bar like, like a defender, this was one of the craziest misses out there, if this makes it 3-2, probably Bar Barbarson will score the fourth one faster, but there were a few chances, I mean Wesker, Credit, credit to them, they really try to play with Barcelona. However, this can only one end one way and Messi takes another shot from outside the box. 4-1 and Barcelona is now in the title race. Only four points. Atletico Madrid is still 55%, but Barcelona 34% getting dangerously close. And we have a head-to-head -head still there. 
and it's the way Athletic is playing, they might drop a few points. So a really, really interesting situation in La Liga, which we didn't expect for the longest of time. So Real Madrid, a little bit in no man's land, and Sevilla also uh, with still still the game hand. I think the top four are, the, but I don't think the Real Sociedad and the Real Betis or Villarreal will go in there. I think those three are teams that will end up actually in the Europa League unless Granada uh, pulls out something uh, crazy. The bottom though, that's exciting. I mean, Huesca looks the one that with, with the least chance. Elche is also slowly moving down. And, you know, after they probably lost to Se Sevilla, y you will really think that uh, it will be Elche. Will, but will uh, Alaves or Eber do something? What about Vaya Valladolid? Getafe is not really safe. Cadiz is not, uh, Cadiz is not safe yet. Cadiz, 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 Cadiz. I need to remember that. So, yeah, even Valencia, a big team like Valencia, are not safe. Um, let's just adjust. It doesn't really change any, any, anything, but it shows that Sevilla is in touching distance to Real Madrid if they should win the game in hand. Expect standings. As I said, the top three a little bit open. At leaning Atleti with Barbarzola, Real Madrid more on the third spot, but it's not inconceivable that Real Madrid win, will win the title. With the win over Betis, Sevilla is very much set on this fourth spot. Real Sociedad very much set on this four on the fifth spot, and then between uh, Betis and Villarreal for um, sixth. And the bottom uh, is a really, really, really tight race. Valladolid, Alaves, Eibar, Elche, and Huesca all are in there. Um, in the midweek, we have Sevilla playing against Elche. That's the make makeup game. Uh, will be interesting. If Sevilla should pull, pull out the win, then I think we can they can book the Champions League place already. And then just before the international break, we have a trap tie for Barra Barcelona at Real Sociedad. Real Madrid against Celta Vigo, also not that uninteresting. I have, I have, I have to say, I think Celta has a prayer there. Valencia against Granada. If Valencia wouldn't be so bad, I, I, I actually would say watch that one and Atletico Madrid against Ala West. For us, we also had a make game. Sampaoli comes back, uh, or comes to Europe finally. No, 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 come back. And of course, a crazy man like Sampaoli has to train a crazy team like Marseille. They get the last minute win through Cuisance against Rennes, who played in their centenary jersey, which I found a little bit weird. Black with a little bit red. Not bad looking, but. Um, didn't lo really look like Ranger uh, jerseys. Uh, the game was even, but in the end, I think uh, Marseille deserved to get that 1 0 win, meaning they actually move into sixth spot. And Marseille was a train wreck a month ago. They are steadying themselves a little bit, and maybe they can uh, really go into Europe. And then on the weekend, it started off with Lyon only playing a 1 1 against Reims, where they had to come back from behind. Uh, Cafaro in the 33rd. Gives Reims the lead and very, very, very late Depay plays it to Calavere and in stoppage time makes it 1-1. Big escape for Lyon and keeping them just about in a title race. But everything looked there that it might actually be trouble. Uh, Marseille, gotta say, some people, second game. Um, Milik just judges behind. It was an even game between Brest. Brest actually getting the equalizer uh, through Brassier in the 71st, uh, which probably will be preserved, but late uh, late on, uh, Tauvin gives Marseille the lead. And then when um, Brest was really trying to move forward and get an e e equalizer, Cuisson scores his second goal uh, within this week. And uh, Marseille ends up 3 1 winners there. Monaco against Lille, uh, Wissam Benjeda had a goal disallowed. Monaco, probably a little bit better team, but it was not a great game per se, and it ends with a nil-nil. So everything pulled out for uh, PSG with a win to actually go closer up, up top and really underline we are the favorite favorites in Ligue 1. Uh, uh, uh. Well, uh, there is a little bit of a story there because there were, uh, how to say, there, there were crazy things happening. Uh, and it was off of the pitch. First of all, it was a 100th game for Mbappé. And in the first half, PSG was the better team. Maybe not uh, great and, do and, and dominant, but they get the goal through Dra Draxler in 4 for a second. And you think, yeah, I guess the lowly in the That sure should be enough. However, um, Colo gets the equalizer for Fernand, and another one of those goals of pure will. And then most crucially, you see already up there that uh, Leonardo was uh, receiving a phone call and Di Maria 
rather surprisingly has to come off. And what happened is that his family's uh, home was burglared and his whole family at gunpoint was there. I mean, what a weird, crazy, absolutely abhorrent situation. I don't know how much the team knew from that, but Di Maria had to leave immediately. And maybe, maybe, I don't know what if that had any impact, but I, all, all, all I know is that Simon gets the winner for Nantes and Nantes pulls out a huge, huge upset, which also helps them a lot in the relegation battle. So PSG with loss, Lille is now three points behind and for the first time this season, PSG are not favorites to win the title. Let it sink in. For the first time this season, PSG are not favorites to win the title. Lyon also scuffing off their chances. Lille doesn't seem so super convincing, but they are in first place. Three points clear ahead of PSG and Lyon. So a uh, big one, big one there. With a win, PSG would have gone uh, ahead of Lille. Marseille moving already up in fifth because Lens also uh, dropping points. And on the bottom, uh, Nantes still in 18th now, but you know, Lorient just hanging there. Nîmes and Dijon unfortunately seem to be, uh, Dijon for sure and Nîmes also seem to be going down in the between Nantes, Lorient. Uh, seems to be for the uh, playoff spot, which might not be the worst news because uh, they would definitely be favored to whoever would come up from Ligue 2. Uh, outside chances of getting relegated for saint Etienne, Strasbourg, Brest, Reims. Uh, but you know, I think it's between Lorient and Nantes. Maybe let's see who will go in. Um, as for the expected standings, the top four are the top four, but only two will go in the Champions League and one in the qual qualifications spot. And Monaco will probably just not join uh, the battle up top. Marseille is then best of the rest, and that clearly. Then there's this broad midfield, and as I said, not Lorient, and then the other two for going down. In the midweek, we have the French Cup rearing its beautiful head with the best matchup possible. PSG against Lille. I think I'm gonna watch that one because that's the top two teams in France and that they already are drawn to get is a little bit of a uh, yeah, travesty. But that's a big match. All the other matches happen in early April, but this is a big, uh, big one and I'm actually thinking I should probably try to watch that one. And then we have on Sunday a big one because Lyon and uh, PSG. Also, I don't know why Saint Etienne Monaco. Saint Etienne is bad, but uh, it doesn't go bad. But we also have the big one not for Lorient. Not against Lorient down. Lille against Nîmes. So Lille can actually put a lot of pressure on both uh, Lyon and PSG. So there needs to be a winner. Also, we have a Friday um, Côte d'Azur derby between Nice and Marseille. Moving on to the last league, Portugal. What do we have there? Um, again, makeup game. No, no, no makeup. We didn't cover it last time. Tuesday evening, Braga beats Guimarães 3 0 at this point. Braga rim could defend the, sec the second spot, although you see already that uh, Porto definitely was ranked a little bit higher there when you look at just chances of winning the league or going into the Champions League. Then on the weekend, Benfica against Boavista. Boavista came out very ambitious, trying to attack Benfica. However, um, Crazy scene. Uh, initially, um, Avazim uh, takes down a Benfica player in, in the box. Yellow card penalty. Looking at VAR, turns out the foul was first occurred. And it, it's really hard, hard to see, but I guess they measured it occurred just outside of the box. So we have a free kick and a red card in the seventh minute. And that changed the dynamic of the game. In the end, it took Seferovic up until almost halftime to get the first goal after Gonçalves assist. And then they do exactly the same goal right after they have in the, few, in the 50 second Benfica easy winners. Believe it or not, I saw some of Tondela against Sporting uh, most of the second half uh, and interesting jerseys on both sides. Tondela, I think, are self-producing from Wallach with a brush stroke effect. And I told you, Tondela is one of those teams I keep seeing, I keep seeing and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Becoming a little bit interested in them, let, let's say that. Let, that. It was a rather even game in Sporting, not having a good game, but in the end, Tomas in the 81st, after Pedro Conchalves' uh, assist, makes it 1-0 for Sporting, and they pull out the win, keeping up there, and Porto also taking a lot of time against Passos. Pepe in the 77th, after Sergio o o Oliveira, a corner kick, and then Sergio Oliveira, uh, him, himself, Charles just made later as a uh, Tarami assist, make the two goals 77 78. 2 0 Porto, 
all safe. And yesterday evening, uh, Family Cow and Braga only play out the draw. Braga turn, uh, turn it around and Family Cow with a late equalizer. So in the table here, Sporting up top, very clear on top. 10 points ahead with um, yeah, 11 games to go still, but it looks like Sporting is gonna win the minute one. I'm always amazed how little goals are being scored in Portugal, only 2.37 uh, at average goals scored. Porto and Praga battled out at the moment for second with Porto the clear favorites and Benfica maybe, maybe, maybe could join there. Because um, if you see now, Benfica is still um, ahead of Praga in the standings there. Uh, and you know, it won't be Portugal if there's a lot of movement on the bottom of the table. So yeah, we have Praga Benfica. I think it's a one where Benfica probably must be for Benfica to want to go in. Sporting against Guimaraes, I think Guimaraes is also falling off a little bit, so I think Sporting should get another win, should I always say. Uh, Porto against Portimonens. Portimonens, I don't know how to pronounce it, if you know, le, 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 no. also a must win game, but you know, in Portugal not many goals are scored, so you never know how it will go. So yeah. With all that, let me know what you thought about all the games in La Liga Liga and the Primera Liga. Give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day! Thank you.